Okay, so yesterday I made these hammer tongs way too big, way too heavy. Uh, but to be fair, I, I'd never made a pair before. I've got no idea what they should be like. It wasn't until I'd actually sort of got them put together I realised they were just a bit too big. They work perfectly well, as you can see. But um, the, the combined weight of them and the hammerhead is, is an awful lot to hang on to. Um, but as you can see, they even work on these fairly small heads. But I'm going to have a go today and make a smaller pair, something much more manageable. Um, I'm only going to be making small heads, so I only want something small. This is what I made these out of. That's three quarter, three eight. So I'm going to try today with a bit of half inch square. See how I get on with those. So let's light the fire up and crack on. Okay, so we've got the place lit up. Give it some beans. Get on. Look at that fat old bloke. Oh, I must take some weight off. Right, first of all, I'm just going to um, flatten it all out a bit so that it's more like instead of half inch square it's more like sort of 5838 uh, I want that sort of rectangular shape now I'm just setting down a, a little nibble over the edge of the anvil which is going to be the little roundy bit on the end and then just basically taper it give it some shit taper it down I'm doing these one at a time, um, just because I find it easier because it's it's quite small stuff. See there, I've started that nibble. Draw it all down a bit more. Round that up. My camera is, it's not playing up, it always does it. I think cameras, unless you put special filters on, always do it. Um, the steel, when it comes out the fire, is nowhere near as hot as the camera makes it look. Um, it's about right now, but when it first comes out, it, it shows it as sort of almost white hot, but it's, it's not. See, that looks like almost white hot, but it's actually, in actual fact, it's only sort of bright yellow. It's nowhere near that hot. So I'm just tapering it down. I want roughly, I think, I'm just, this is all out of, out of the thin air, I'm aiming for roughly 8 inches of uh, modified steel. So I want it about 5838 at the fattest end tapering down to something like I don't know 5 sixteenths maybe where the little round bit is maybe even quarter don't know anyway I don't think I'm going to use that hammer I'm going to get my best that's the one I like good old cross pane great big lumps taken out of it but I love it this one so this is, I'm just now going to finish it off, dress it up a bit, get it to the final dimensions. And so I've never made one of these before, well, until yesterday. Um, but I had half an hour or so and I just thought, let's give it a go. Um, there you go, I've roughly marked 8 inches on the anvil there. Um, I had no plans, no scales, no drawings, no nothing. I've just seen a couple of pictures on um, Pinterest or Instagram. No, Pinterest I think it was. And thought we'll have a go. So it's all been made up out of my head. Like even that round nibble on the end. Um, Looking closely at the photos, I think uh, 
a lot of people they draw it down to a point and then curl the point up but I thought what's the point in doing that just knock a nibble over on the end seems more sensible to me I'm just knocking the edges off making it sort of a rounded rectangle shape just so there's no sharp edges just a little bit more pleasing to the eye and probably will work a little bit better the if you've got no sharp edges they won't get caught in the eye hole if you're depending on how far into the eye hole the end of the tongs go you find if you work it as it goes towards a black heat it gets rid of the hammer marks much better than if you try and do it when it's red they blend in much better when it's a black heat you get a nice clean forging relatively clean a few hammer marks but not a lot so now just to get rid of all of them I'm just going to go do a little bit of hot rasping and again this looks bright yellow here but it's actually only sort of orange in reality I don't quite know why the camera does that I'm sure someone will tell me and they'll suggest filters and this that and the other I've got an IR filter on there already and try adjusting this and that now that but to be honest with you I really don't care this uh, just tidies things up even more a bit of hot rasping used to do this a lot making shoes if we were doing like a cork and wedge or a I don't know something fancy you just tidy up around your transitions with a bit of hot rasping made things look a lot nicer right so there you go you can see it's it's come up quite nice I'm just going to mark it out now for where I want to bend it and again all hit and miss I'm just winging it. I'm going to go for about six inches from my first bend and then we'll work out where the second bend comes once I've done that one. Now I could do this over the edge of the anvil with a nice hot heat, tap it round but I'm going to use the miracle bender just because I can. I've got it, it's easy, it's done in a second. You can be fairly precise and you don't get any hammer blows on it so after nicely tidying that up I'm not going to damage it I've put a, a, a mark there as you can see which is roughly 45 I'm just pulling it out to that I've gone a little bit too far that's better go easy now we're going to mark the second bend now again I could do it over the anvil can't do it in the miracle bender because I can't hold it because it's too short or unless I've spent loads of time packing it all out so I'm going to use my I don't know what you'd call this little bender I've marked approximately I think it's about three and a half inches on the bender so I know where to put it and then I'm just pulling it round and again look at that 
simple, quick, no hammer marks, nice uh, gradual bend, it's not too sharp. I'm just going to put my touch mark on it because I always forget to do this on a majority of my jobs. Not that it matters, you know, who cares who made it, but sometimes it's quite nice just to put your mark on things. I won't be selling them, so it doesn't really matter. But when I'm dead and gone, someone might want to know. So, as if by magic, we've got two of them. So I literally didn't bother boring you with the second one because it's exactly the same as the first one. Now I'm just going to mark out where I want to put my um, rivet hole. And I'm going to punch that. So I'll just line them up. Make sure the ends are level. And again, I'm just eyeballing it roughly where I think I want it. Obviously you want it fairly close to the, to the bend. I'm not going to put it right on the bend. I suppose I could do, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to put a little centre pop in there. There you go. We should be able to see then. It comes out the fire. Again, it's not that hot. You don't really want it that hot. You want it about a, sort of a bright orange, but not like it looks there. Now I'm using my old stud punch that I used to use for putting stud holes in my shoes. I thought that came in quite handy. This is a 5 16th one, so I'm going to just knock it through and open it up to about 8 mil, 5 16th. No. Open it up a little bit more on both sides, so it's pretty much the same, it's not tapered. You can see with all these operations, and I'll just point in there, you might have seen it fly out. I don't know whether you did or not, but trust me, it did. Um, and with all these little operations with the bending and the, this punching you get very little damage and distortion so it's keeping everything nice and in shape now I can't actually find my punch mark I think I found it, there it is now this one actually goes a little bit off centre try and even it up a bit but there it goes that piece I don't know if you saw it that time yeah it's a little bit off center that one but hey ho it, it won't matter you know it's only for me again just open them up and there you go quarter would probably have done I haven't got a punch at a punch quarter, so I'm just using what I've got. I've got a 5 sixteenths and a 3 8. Right, I've got a 5 sixteenths punch, but I haven't got any 5 sixteenths rivets, so I've just cut off a bit of 8mm round, just put it in temporarily, just so I can see how things fit up. Now, these handles. You know, people would think, oh yes, he's just going to draw them down. Well, anyone who's watched my channel will know I don't do drawing out handles. I've got two buggered wrists, buggered shoulder, which I've just had repaired. I'm sure as hell not going to draw them out. So I'm going to cut them off and weld on a couple of ordinary nice round reins. So let's do that next. Now, I'm just going to scarf these. These are the reins. Just some bits of 3.8 round. I have just in the past on many tongs just literally butt welded them on and I've never had one come apart yet they always seem if anything's going to break it's always at the base of the jaw um, but just for added security I'm just going to put a, a bit of a scarf on there 
about half the thickness uh, and I shall do the same on the other bit and then just whack a, a MIG weld along it you know I can't see the point in drawing stuff out if you haven't got a power hammer and so I've got just had one shoulder repaired about eight, seven or eight months ago it's still not back to fully strength but much much better and I'm just about to have another operation on my hand I've got carpal tunnel yet again so that's why I'm not putting myself out doing too much hammering if I can avoid it I will right now I'm just doing the same with these drawing these back down to about 3.8 Three eight sort of width. Down to, I suppose down to about a three eight square. No, not three eight square. Yeah, three eight square. Uh, and then I shall put the, the the scarf on there. Now, if you're worried about damaging the rivet hole, it's about the right width. Just checking. You could always leave the rivet hole until you've got your reins on, or if you're going to draw your own reins out, draw them out then put the, the uh, hole in. I'm actually not that bothered and to be honest I didn't even think about it but I probably would have been better off cutting these off, doing this scarf, welding the reins on and then punching them. But as I say I didn't think about it and I'm not that bothered. There you go. You can see it has slightly distorted the hole. Ow, that was hot. Um, I'm just going to do that. Put some weld in there and then blend it all back in. And as you can see, it just has distorted the hole a little bit, but I can easily punch that out again. Just open it up. I'm just doing the other one. It's... Um, you can see how much the uh, camera is shaking just do that little bit of hammering and this farmer must have put some pretty thin concrete down on his floor because the camera is quite a way off from where we are but yeah you can see that shaking hmm, might have to do some more foundations if I get a, if I do get a power hammer anyway it's beside the point you can see what I'm doing just scarfing this Getting them both ready. Just tidying the hole up because I have slightly distorted it. It's easy enough to rectify. Done and weld some reins on. Right, I've just put a little bevel, if it'll focus, you'll be able to see this, put a little bevel on both the jaw and the rein, just so I can get a bit more weld in there. I've just tacked it at the back. So now we can blast a bit of MIG in there. I'm loving my new shop. The space I've got, I can do more than one job at a time. I just can't get over how cracking this place is. I'm very, very lucky. There you go. So all I'm going to do is go back over to the fire, blend it all in. Bob's your uncle. And don't forget the rivet. Right, just tap it in, and I'm going to sort of try and make the transi transition from square to round, just so it looks a bit nicer. It doesn't make any difference to how it functions as long as it's not too too thick, too wide. I like to try and make things look pleasing to the eye. Which 
come straight. Again, doing it as it gets black, takes the marks out of it. Get the other one in. Same on that one. Checking that they're the same, which they're not. See one's bent way over than the other one. Just make sure they're a bit closer. There they are. There we go. So I've just put the rivet in, I haven't hammered it up yet, I've just tapped it to stop them coming apart. But we'll hammer the rivet up, then we'll put it back in the fire and do the fine tuning. Because they'll need to be set down so that they come together in the middle. The reins will need to be set down a little bit so they overlap. The rivet will probably need to be tightened up even more. So that's got the rivet set. You can see that they don't match properly. They overlap. So we'll get them in the fire and sort that out. Get these to match better. Get them to come together at the end. Easy. Let's do the rivet first, make sure that's nice and tight. Yep, they're still working. Now just tighten everything up, close up. Now they're doing this a bit cack handed, I should have just put that over the edge of the anvil, I thought, or over the beak. I thought I could just tap that out. Let's tighten that up. Pull that out. It's all a little bit of just fettling, fine tuning. Checking them out. I think that's about right. Feels quite nice. Maybe open them up a little bit so that the reins don't come quite so close together. But it will take that small one, but I should be making some even smaller ones, so I might tighten them up a little bit more. That's a slightly bigger one. You can see that's about how you want them. Maybe a little bit less than that. But as I say, I should be doing much smaller heads. With this pair anyway. I can use that other big pair if I want to do some big heads. So there you go. That's the set I made yesterday. That's the set I made just now. You can see how much smaller than that they are. And trust me, they're much lighter, much easier to handle. Um, yeah, nice. They're going to come in very handy. So I suppose the next thing, I've got to start making some hammers. I'll probably start off with uh, a few more nailing hammers for showing. See if I can flog a few of them to some of the local guys. And then take it from there however that goes so thanks for watching hope it's been useful to somebody and we'll catch you on the next one